Hey everybody, welcome back to Parkitect. Today it's time for Sakura Gardens. Now the mission statement is as follows. Attract more visitors to this peaceful garden by adding amusement rides and shops while retaining its old charm. Be careful of building thrilling rides however, as the guests visiting the garden prefer gentle, calmer rides. Now the goals are to have at least 500 guests in the park with a cleanliness rating of 80%, which isn't too difficult. The only challenge that I kind of see is the fact that we need to keep everything quite gentle. But as far as I've heard from this scenario, the rules on that are pretty lax as well. So I think I can build some decently medium intense roller coasters as well. Anyway, it's something we'll see. I've actually kind of been dreading doing this scenario because I know this one is going to be very scenery focused and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to pull it off that well. Huge shout out to Studio KV who I've already of course done so many shout outs to so I don't think anybody who's watching this video right now doesn't even know who KV is. But in case you don't, he does amazing Park Tech videos and made a really good map for this scenario in particular. It's one that I remember particularly for some reason. I just think it's really beautiful and I'm gonna try and somehow make my map hopefully even hold a candle to what he did. Anyway, this is what the map looks like, a simple Japanese garden. I actually made this when Gabby made the Sakura tree, which is the one that you can see here. And I thought it was so good that I just wanted to build a scenario just to kind of show off this tree. At least that's how I remember it being. Um, now most of the map is quite empty, but it does follow the overall layout of a traditional uh, Japanese garden, the kind that is built around the lake. So we have the central lake, a, uh, a bridge and some other elements interacting with it, a small pavilion down by the lake to relax in, and then also a section with a uh, quite signature red bridge here, which you often see in Japanese gardens as well. It's kind of based on this bridge in uh, a particular garden next to Tokyo Dome City. Uh, it's just really pretty to have this kind of hill set up with a, a red bridge with a fake river running underneath it, I figured. So that's the reason for adding all of that. But despite following the general layout of a, of a Japanese garden, the park is mostly empty and there's a lot of space to work with too much even, I'd reckon. So I'm going to try to close some of these paths off before I get started. The rides, I guess, are decent. Uh, you could definitely tell that the rides are geared toward a lower intensity, so that shouldn't be too difficult, but I'm still going to research through all rides because I think most of those should be fine. And the same honestly goes for coasters. I mean, at the end of the day, everything just kind of depends on what the layout you build is going to be like. And with that said, Let's get started building. Uh, wow, that was a beautiful sentence. Let's get started with building and see where we end up. All right, so for starters, I went ahead and removed the path at the entrance because I have some different plans for this area. They're not actually that big plans, but I think everything is just gonna work out much better if this whole area is just going to be a very wide path to lead into the rest of the gardens. I will have some more winding paths going through the gardens as you'll typically see in Japanese gardens. But I think for the context of a theme park and the sort of quote unquote main street that I want to build, I wanted to have this very wide open area at the beginning here. Now this is where we enter some coaster building already, which is kind of exciting, I think. But you're going to have to keep in mind that I'm going to spend most of this episode again on buildings, especially since we're doing some Japanese stuff. It's going to be quite detailed and very detail uh, focused in general. but. I wanted to get this roller coaster out of the way because I'm gonna need to build something even slightly thrilling because the choice of rides that we start out with is not that great and I definitely need something to rake in the money so hopefully if all goes well this coaster is gonna be my main ticket to making a profit at some point in the future. But that said I'm also not sure because all of the crazy Japanese architecture plans that I have don't really fare too well in a gameplay perspective because they're very expensive. But yeah, I really hope that this coaster is going to be able to offset that. Other than that, it's just a simple family coaster with lots of curves and little dips and valleys and a final helix and then it's back into the station. Nothing too spectacular, but again, I'm trying my best to have some sort of variety in these layouts while also keeping them very uh, true to what they're like in real life. And at the same time, this one is slightly more interesting because it does follow the terrain, so at least it's not the kind of coaster that you can just randomly plop down everywhere. Now the station building for this is going to be quite extravagant. Um, I was inspired to just 
build a large Japanese temple. It isn't actually based on anything in particular. Honestly, I've done so many Japanese builds in Planet Coaster and Planet Zoo and Park Tech at this point that I just have this folder on my computer uh, with all kinds of references for Japanese architecture, uh, things to be inspired by or things to like see the rules and conventions. Basically, it's something that's like baked into my head at this point. So even though I usually, you know, like to get a lot of references and search on the internet for inspiration or ideas on certain themes, when it comes to Japanese at this point, I just revert back to my old folder and I'm just like, all right, what kind of stuff can we do nowadays? Um, so actually, when I was doing this build, I wasn't really looking for Japanese architecture in specific, uh, specifically to base it on, but rather trying to figure out ways in which you could build it in Parkitect. Because personally, for me, my struggle is not really, you know, seeing what Japanese architecture is like, because at this point I have so much real life experience and knowledge about it that it's not really the struggle. Uh, the real struggle is trying to shoehorn these grid conforming pieces in Parkitect into a Japanese theme and somehow turn it into a detailed building. Um, so I went actually back and looked at what other people did who've tackled the Japanese theme before. Um, now this would probably be most notably myself on Pagoda Valley, uh, both the scenario itself and me trying to make it. Um, but also Studio KV has done some really great Asian builds and I think um, he did a really good Sakura Gardens as well that was quite inspiring but that I'm not really going to base anything off of. Uh, but what I did look into is um, a specific user of the Parkitect Discord by the name of Pierre Janot, I think it is, who's really talented and actually an artist in real life and who built this Japanese Togo coaster with the station that I thought was super interesting because he used this technique of using the very flat gentle roof pieces to create these upward corners that you see on Asian architecture so the ones that I just built and I basically just ripped this roof building method straight from his build uh, it's just I think the best way to build convincing Asian roofs and by that I mean the roofs that curve upwards toward the end because of course not all Japanese buildings do this uh, but the bigger fancier ones like temples usually do um, and I think this is really the best way to build this kind of roof structure. Now the rest of the uh, Japanese-ness of this building I would say really hinges on the fact that it's once again entirely off-grid so all of the walls are on a half grid uh, which makes it a bit more difficult to somehow work the paths into it because you have to work with these cubes to shape the walls of the grid while also you know allowing the paths to not run into anything uh, but I think it worked out in the end. Uh, another struggle is making fences and horizontal beams because even though the wooden pillars can be placed in any placement that you want uh, that's not really a struggle there aren't any horizontal beams that you can put you know in off-grid positions so I ended up using uh, actually some letters as horizontal wooden beams. Uh, as you may know in Parkitect, you can create custom text signs by typing something and then it appears in a 3D form in the game. And I say 3D but it's actually a bunch of overlapped alpha textures that look 3D. It's convincing enough uh, but it's really cool you can type basically anything and it'll turn into a 3D sign in the game. So I just typed out a long string of um, Oh, what's that? An underscore. And it just basically created a giant horizontal beam that I used for the fence of the station. So that's how I somehow managed to get some horizontal beams in there. And then for the gate in front of that, I'm using a very similar roof, only on a much smaller scale. And this time for the horizontal wooden beams, I'm just using the simple cube method of creating a 0.13 size cube and then setting the grid to 8. So you have a tiny grid and then connecting all of these little cubes to make a horizontal beam. And while honestly this is a pretty good method for making horizontal beams or really any kind of structure in any direction that you want to, it's, uh, it's something that's kind of resource heavy, kind of expensive and kind of a hassle to build. So I think for the station building itself the, the letters, the underscores work fine as the fences. Uh, but for the gates, uh, a much smaller structure where I wanted to have a much more heavy texture of wood around it, I think the cube method worked a bit better. 
so that's it for the general uh, temple-like structure of the station, I would say. Uh, of course, the path underneath the, the big gates in front is going to be the entrance to the queue. I am so good at making terrible queues where it's really hard to notice the queue or where they don't really stand out too much, but I think in that sort of history, this is probably one of my better queue entrances because it's actually very noticeable and uh, it's also very front and center. From a gameplay perspective, it should hopefully work out quite well as well because all of the guests coming into the park will pass by this gate and will think, hmm, maybe I want to ride that coaster. And then I'm, it's just my task to make that coaster very expensive and hopefully attract a lot of guests and make some decent money. Now to finish the Main Street-ish area here, I wanted to build some small residential houses it's nothing too exciting. This building in particular you actually can't enter because I wanted to really make it look convincingly uh, like a small Japanese house so it has that porch area up front and then a very simple gable roof on top of that. I'm not really going as much into detail as I did with the temple uh, but with the overall structure of the building I'm still trying to you know make it look as convincingly Japanese as possible. Which to be honest is very easy to do. I think Japanese architecture in particular um, tends to be overdone when people are doing it in games like this uh, because you very often just refer to these curved windows and overly detailed temple-like structures. Um, but if you go to the average house or warehouse or just inner city building, the traditional architectural styles are really not that detailed and sometimes really not even that different from architectural styles in Europe for instance. Uh, when it comes to the woodwork and things like this. So honestly, with very simple pieces and with not that many pieces, but just in the right composition, I think you can really make some very convincing Japanese buildings as well. Sometimes it doesn't really have to be too complicated. Now this building next to the house is inspired by the warehouses that you'll find. Particularly, uh, there's this town called Kawagoe in, uh, in Tokyo. Well, technically the metropolitan area of Tokyo, but it's not actually in the city of Tokyo, but yeah, pretty much that area, uh, which has a bunch of these old warehouses, and that's what this building was inspired by. It's also a very simple setup. Uh, they're pretty much always shaped like this. They just have different colors and different details, but it's a very, very standard, distinct building style, I would say. And this is also going to be the one building that's actually going to be functional. When I was building this, I was planning to make this the food court, but then I checked out the, the the stall section and I realized that there's not even a food stall. There's not even a drink stall that is already, you know, uh, that you start out the scenario with. So that is kind of difficult uh, because that means I'm going to have to research stuff and then put it in that building. So for now, the building is going to be empty except for a small umbrella shop, I believe. Uh, but hopefully at some point in the future, I will have the food shops unlocked so that I can actually turn this into a food court. Uh, because yeah, the trouble with these kind of scenarios where you start out with uh, a lack of food stalls is that people do get very upset about this and you're also missing out a potential source of... Uh, potential? What? You're missing out a potential source of revenue as well. So that's always kind of annoying, um, but it's more of just a, a small upfront challenge that over the long run of the scenario, as long as you pay attention to it, shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, another thing that's actually research related is that when you start out this scenario, you don't have the scenery pieces that I'm using right now. Specifically, I restarted this scenario a bunch of times and started researching stuff because I wanted to have the medieval structures scenery pack because the medieval structures has these roof pieces that I'm using for the Asian roofs all over the place. Um, and I've seen some people complain that this scenario misses some scenery items which to be fair most scenarios start out with a very limited selection of scenery uh, and in this one in particular if you want to go all out on scenery you're gonna have to research scenery as well and that's something that I often forget to talk about in my videos but it's it really has some potential and if you're trying to play these scenarios based not just on gameplay but also trying to make a nice park out of it uh, like I am then definitely research comes into question as well. Um, I know it's always been one of those things that people would turn off in Roller Coaster Tycoon, for instance, uh, but it can really be very important. And especially in this case, since I needed those medieval pieces to make 
the 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 whole Pierre Jeannot roof structure work, I really had to research that before I started the rest of the scenario. So anyway, my last little build before I try to make this park run, because I'm quickly running out of money, is going to be this wave swing next to the lake. I don't know why these things just work out so well next to a body of water, but they're just super picturesque, so I figured if I'm gonna place this thing anywhere, it's definitely gonna be next to the lake. And here I am again, trying to make this complicated roof structure work, but every time it just doesn't quite work for my taste, it's just a bit too over the top. Um, I prefer my builds to be more clean, as opposed to just putting a bunch of random details on stuff, so I'm just gonna revert back to a much more simple roof style at this point, and just leave it at that. Um, also helps that things are not sticking out, because at first I was already building a roof uh, where the people on the wave swing would actually crash through the roof, so that was some very unfortunate planning, but at least this one is a safe distance away from the wave swinger as well. So yeah, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the rest of that path, but I just wanted to put this wave swinger here and then see where I could go from there. And before I move on, I'm just placing down this carousel here to try and make some extra money um, and see if I can somehow run this park with a profit. I want to say that this isn't what it looks like, but yeah, it kind of is what it looks like. I'm not making a profit, it's not going too well. People don't really like the park either, and I think the majority of issues really just stems from the fact that there isn't anything that's intense enough for the people in this park, because even though they don't like very intense rides, they definitely want something more intense than what I have, and that's gonna be difficult. Actually, right now, let's quickly fix up that bench, because it's annoying me. Um, but yeah, basically this means that even though I took out a loan, I'm still not making money and I was actually making a very, very small profit for a tiny amount of time, um, but not anymore. Actually, if I check out the graph, then you can see that my balance was going up for a while, uh, but now I don't really run a profit operating in the park anymore, so... It's a, it's a downward spiral. So actually, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna pause the game here and not let the let this disaster continue any further. My current plan is I just researched the wooden coaster, so I want to build a woody. It's gonna be intense enough to keep the the more intense seeking guests happy. And at this point, I am really praying that the cumulative effect of getting more people into the park also means that more people are gonna ride the rides that I already have. So hopefully, exponentially, I'm going to make a profit again. I'm really not sure, and it's going to be super risky, because I already took out a decently sized loan of $8,000. So I'm going to take out another loan, and I think it's just going to be the $11,000 one, which means I'm going to have to pay a, a monthly fee of a few hundred dollars in hopes of even somehow running a profit. But I'm carefully optimistic about it. Either way, it's the only way that I'm going to be able to save this park. Because as it looks right now, this thing uh, is not really doing too well. So yeah, I'm sorry that I'm not going to do too much of a tour of the park right now. This is just a quick financial update. I'm going to try to keep this thing afloat, but it's not going to be very easy. But uh, let's build a woody and see how it goes. <sighs> you know what? Forget about it. I tried for a couple of hours yesterday to somehow make that park work, but the wooden coaster that I built just didn't bring in the money, and whatever I tried to save it, I kept going bankrupt. So, what I ended up doing is perhaps the greatest shame in all of my Parkitect playthrough, but yeah, I decided to sort of do that thing that some people do in Roller Coaster Tycoon, and really just build layouts based on how much money you can make off of it. So. Uh, this is a little bit of a Marcel Voss-ish kind of approach to Parkitect. I built two shuttle loops and a terrible, horrible wooden coaster on its place. And it really hurt to delete that old wooden coaster build because the layout was just perfectly fitting into this area. But I saved it as a blueprint. Hopefully I can bring it back later. But for now, this stuff has been able to make this park run a profit. And I've been able to, you know, run it for a while and get some money to finance the crazy plans that I have, because I still have some insane scenery plans. So from this point onward, I'm gonna try to work my way 
into a very thematic fitting Sakura Gardens. Eventually I'm gonna remove these coasters and replace them with the old GCI wooden coaster that I made in the same location that should really be here. But hey, I have some financial investors to also make happy. Either way, I'm gonna focus my efforts on a different area for now. I got the idea to build a Japanese castle on top of this hill because I think it'll fit perfectly here. And then I'll see whatever I can do next to that. And once I have enough money, actually I probably have enough money at this point anyway. Um, but once I feel confident to tackle it, I'm gonna go back into this area and rebuild the wooden coaster that I built earlier. So, yeah. This is, a, this is not the best situation. But at least it's something that I can go forward from again. And all I really wanted to do is to save the main street which I built here. So even if I'm resorting to some really terrible strategies here, I just wanted to make sure that I would save these buildings. And that's at least a success. So there's something good in this. Let's keep going from here though. Alright, so the first thing I wanted to do is clear some land at the back of this scene that I built here. Now, this was a little bit annoying because I forgot at this point that I made the scenery which is already in the scenario. Most notably, just that bridge with the area directly around it is all protected. So you're not allowed to remove that or anything, which is a bit unfortunate because at first I was figuring that I could just build the castle right on top of that. but. That wasn't going to work, so I decided to build this castle just next to it. And it's going to be a Japanese castle, because I figured that would be a really cool thing to add at this point. It is completely just scenery. There's not going to be any ride or anything in or around it. <laughs> Honestly, I've just always wanted to try building a Japanese castle in Parkitect, and this just seemed like the best excuse to do so. It is completely pointless otherwise, but at this point I was making so much bank that I figured I'm just going to spend all of this money uh, anyway and see what I can build. Because these things are just so much fun to build. They're not even that hard to build, I think. In Parkitect specifically, I think the struggle is trying to make it seem off-grid and making every floor a little bit, you know, it's smaller than the one underneath it. Because the way that these Japanese castles are built is that they're often just different floors stacked upon each other where every consecutive floor uh, becomes a bit smaller until the top floor is just this tiny uh, pavilion on top of the whole structure. And then you can add all kinds of details on different floors, different gables and things like this. So there's a lot of space for experimentation and just general messing about. So it's something really fun to build. I know I've built one pretty much in Planet Coaster and kind of in Planet Zoo as well. So, haven't done that in Parkitect yet, so here it goes, I suppose. I also have to say that, once again, the, the whole strategy of Pierre Genot to build these small roofs with the corners outward to create these kind of curved Asian roofs is such an amazing trick that I just keep using throughout this whole park. So even if all of the roofs are gonna look pretty much the same, they're honestly all just using his technique because I think it's the best looking way that you can create Asian roofs. I did have to come up with a sort of alternative strategy here because some of the roofs had to be, you know, another half tile back. So for this, I ended up making these diagonal borders using tiny cubes and putting them on an eighth grid uh, diagonal path, which is a bit... Uh, iffy looking, you can definitely tell that they're made out of a bunch of cubes, but if you don't really pay too much attention to it and you're just looking from a fair distance, I think it it's convincing enough and you really get that sort of almost pie-like structure with a bunch of cakes stacked on top of each other with all kinds of detail on it. Um, and this is also, for me, honestly, the kind of building where you can just, you know, create a general layout and then turn off your mind and just randomly detail it everywhere and see where it goes. This is just one of these types of structures that I think you can really doodle, or at least uh, personally I can, because it just really feels like that. Just doing things here and there without having too much of a plan and just seeing where it ends up. Now, just this building alone was never going to cut it because these castles always have some buildings attached to them. And in this instance, I was also specifically basing this off of an image of a miniature model of a castle that I found somewhere, uh, which also had this smaller building next to it. 
So I figured I had to do something similar and at least make this a bit bigger. Not to mention create some sort of small open plaza between these buildings. So there's also an open space within the castle grounds. So I'm not entirely sure what you know the, the different uses of these buildings would be. But for the overall structure I figured it would be best to add this small building on the side of it as well. Now these structures in real life are usually quite old, although sometimes I believe they're also kind of imitations uh, because the castle in Osaka, for instance, is just a modern building that was reconstructed after an old castle, but is really just made out of concrete and steel and even has an elevator inside of it. So whether this building is real or not, given the context of this theme park, I'm honestly not sure. I don't really you know, want to come up with too much of a lore, but to be honest, it could very well just be a modern building, just a fake castle, more or less, to make this scene. Um, because I don't think this theme park would have necessarily had to, you know, develop alongside an actual real old castle, because then it probably would have been protected anyway. But yeah, that pretty much finishes off the castle itself. I decided to have a pretty wide path with some stairs in front of it leading into the castle grounds and then a simple wooden gate. Um, and it's it's really quite simple honestly, I'm not detailing it too much but I just think that you know all of the different pieces, the textures and the colors work quite well together. Not to mention that I accidentally also researched the adventure theme but I'm super happy that I did because the, the stone from the adventure pyramids is perfect for cases like this, because the foundations of Japanese castles are often made out of some kind of rough cobblestone, and this, this adventure texture is just perfect for that. At first I was thinking that I could build it out of fences, uh, but they don't really simulate the way that these these stone walls in real life often fan out diagonally and become wider toward the base of the wall. So that's something that the adventure temple theme pieces do really well. And after this, um, well, I was looking at a flat ride and it didn't had a it didn't have a roof on top of it. So my instincts started kicking in at this point, and I decided to add a small roof on top of the carousel. But again, trying to experiment a bit, so I also got the fantasy theme, which I believe this curved roof is from, and it's a roof that you don't have in a lot of scenarios, it's something that you often just have to research, because it's one of those niche pieces that you typically don't really use. Um, it's supposed to be used in some sort of fantasy setting, but I think it works really well as an Asian roof. Now you always have to watch out with it, because there's really only one piece of this. You only get that one curved roof piece, there are no corner pieces or um, smaller pieces or more gentle pieces, this is all you get. So it's only useful in a few niche cases, but I think this was a good case to use it. Get some curved roof in there and it just looks Asian enough. The only thing that is a bit annoying about this build, but I decided to not really care about it, is the fact that people are gonna walk through the pillars basically all the time because there are pillars in the middle of the flat ride section. But even though I normally try to stay, you know, keep clear of the, the, the actual paths of the flat ride, this time I figured it would look weird to have pillars at the outside of this roof. So. I'm going for aesthetics over function for this one, I suppose. And at this point, I sort of did have a technique for uh, putting buildings off grid otherwise, which is basically using those 0.5 cubes to create half uh, grid walls. And it just kind of works really well. I always avoided building too many, you know, off grid buildings because I figured it would be really difficult. The first time that I really tried doing it, I think was in Pagoda Valley. But at this point with this cube method, I'm kind of confident enough that you can use it in any situation because if you are building a building where you want people to go inside of it or you're trying to house a flat ride, all you have to do is just put these 0.5 cubes around that structure and then you can still build an off-grid building while having the, the on-grid flat ride or coaster or pathwork go into it. So honestly, it just works out really well. And even though I would still love to see it being possible to put walls on a full grid, I also kind of understand why walls and roofs are limited. Um, 
or mean no i i would love to see walls being you know uh put on a half grid but i can kind of understand why they're limited to a full grid because that just makes everything a lot easier especially if you're new to the game and at the end of the day if you really want to build off grid buildings or anything really we have all of these basic shapes that you can basically place in any way that you want so that ends up working out usually now this is going to be probably my favorite part in this video and honestly maybe i should just say it outright i think this wooden coaster is probably my favorite coaster that i've made in the scenario playthrough so far and i know these are some pretty big words but for me it just hit the right balance between the layout uh, working out well and the scenery fitting the map and fitting the coaster as well and just all together it's quite compact while also using the terrain it just kind of ticks all of the boxes for me and i wish there was something about it that i could replicate in my next coasters but honestly it's just i think a case where everything just happens to work out in some way and you're just lucky to get into the flow and build something that you're really happy with because it creativity is just really you know unpredictable like that um, but yeah i think this coaster turned out really cool so, as you can see, I deleted my money makers because they'd pretty much done what I needed them to do. I had $40,000 in the bank and figured I could just build the park using all of this money and put back the woody that I had in here before. It did take a bit of shuffling around and I'm not sure if it's exactly in the same location as it used to be, uh, but I don't think that matters too much. What matters is that we have the layouts and that I can continue with my plans as I made them. And at this point, I'm kind of just recreating the station that I originally had. Although, with some slight differences, trying to improve it a little bit. I always think that, you know, the good thing about losing progress is that whenever you do something again, you always end up doing it better than the first time because you've, you know, learned from the mistakes that you've made the first time. And not to mention that you usually do it faster than the first time as well because you don't have to work out everything anymore. So. When it comes to games like this, it's always annoying to lose a save file, but it's not the end of the world because usually it's a great opportunity to, you know, improve on what you had before. And I think this is definitely a case like that as well. Now, I was considering putting the queue uh, where I had it before. Uh, so my old plan was to have the queue just go right next to the station building and just leave it at that uh, but then i figured that you know in park attack terms that might work because it's a long enough queue to still queue up enough people for the next train this coaster is going to have a two train operation so it's going to be super efficient anyway so i don't really have to worry about capacity or anything um, so i think that would have been fine but at this point i realized that it would be kind of boring and you wouldn't have as much interaction between the path work and the uh, the coaster itself so I decided to make this queue quite long and a bit more realistic, if you will, and have it go underneath the structure of the wooden coaster and have a bit of interaction with it as well. So I created this small valley where the coaster dips underneath the track uh, or underneath the uh, path. And I decided to add a bridge on top of this. It's a bit difficult to make an Asian looking bridge in Parkitect because at this point the pieces are getting so small that, you know, the difference is it, it's hard to really add Asian details so you have to rely on shapes of buildings and this bridge is just too small to really differentiate it uh, but I think it works out with these sort of very light eaves and um, yeah I think just in general the fact that it uses the same type of objects and the same colors as a lot of the buildings in the scenario just make it fit in in the context uh, so even though the bridge on its own wouldn't really look too typically Asian I'm going to try to at least, you know, have the theming around it reflect that. And at that point, I think it should work out fine. Now, at this point, I got to work on the station, uh, which is a bit annoying because it's going to be a huge station, mostly because I have that station flyby. This woody is modeled after GCI wooden coasters, even though it has a drop which goes straight down, which is a bit unusual for a GCI coaster, although not unseen because it definitely exists. Uh, but yeah, these kinds of coasters typically have a station flyby, 
where halfway through the layout, the coaster just enters the station building. Uh, usually it's above the height of the station, so you can actually see the cars passing by when you're in the station, but sometimes it just goes underneath it as well. Uh, whatever it really wants to do, I guess. Uh, but the cool thing about it is that you, you know, as, as somebody riding the coaster, you have this amazing uh, sort of head chopper moment where you're going at full speed into a building, and that's just really cool in general uh, but if you're standing in the station whenever those trains pass through the building it just creates this super loud rumble which is really awesome uh, it never really fails to hype me up for a coaster although i also have to say it totally hurts my eardrums as well usually those things are loud as heck uh, but yeah it's, it's really cool and it's a very typical element that you see in gci coasters so I had to put that in here. It just means that the roof has to be quite tall uh, to actually fit all of that. Now for this roof structure, I'm again using sort of a temple-like structure uh, where it's quite fat in the middle there. And then we have two wings coming out from the sides. This kind of architecture just works out really well for station buildings, I've realized. Japanese temples kind of just have shapes that work out for station buildings, which you can't really say for any other or, or most other vernacular architectural types around the world, I guess. Um, it's not too easy to, you know, make an alpine style station because you usually end up with a building that looks like it's stretched out uh, bigger than it should be or more open than it should be, but because in real life these buildings are always quite large uh, on a rectangular sort of footprint and very open with lots of pillars, they actually just kind of work out really well as a coaster station, I think. I cut out some footage there where I was placing the gates for the entrance of the queue because it's basically a copy of the gates that you see at the front of the park. I just decided to remove the sort of wooden walkway that's on top of it and just change the detailing. But the overall shape and the roof structure is basically the same. Um, I'm also trying to fit these in a little bit together. So while you may have noticed that for every building I build, I try to give it a slightly different roof color. Um, so all the roofs are basically dark gray, but some are more reddish gray and some are more blue or greenish gray. Uh, but for these two buildings, just to make sure that the station building and the gates of the queue entrance look like they belong together, I decided to just go for the exact same color. Um, but usually I just, you know, have some minute differences in colors for some variety. And all of the foliage, even here, I decided would probably be best to just have it be inspired by Japanese garden foliage. So that means lots of round bubbly trees and sinking lots of trees into the ground to create these round large shrubs and a few pine trees between that as well. And just all together, I think that works out as a, as a Japanese looking enough kind of structure. Um, I decided to add a little bit of support here to the wooden coaster, but I didn't have to add too much because at the end of the day, it's a very terrain conforming coaster. So most of it has very little supports, uh, but it's this kind of thing that I tend to forget. So hence why I'm only doing it at this stage in building the coaster. Uh, because only at this point I kind of realized, wait, I should probably add some extra lateral supports. And yeah, that basically more or less finishes the coaster itself. Only thing I still added is a bit more detail on the queue line, I believe, and just this area in general, creating a quick stone fence, using also the, uh, the adventure borders, which turned out to become so useful throughout these builds. I didn't really realize that this makes such a good stone fence. It was kind of a accidental discovery, but yeah, it kind of works out really well. Uh, all I really put between that are some one meter pillar pieces, uh, but that's all. These borders from the adventure theme are just really good for whenever you need, you know, a straight stone uh, piece because it just kind of resembles that for some reason. But yeah, that is basically it for the wooden coaster. I'm going to move over to a different section because I don't think there's much to add there anymore. At this point, I let the game run for a bit and see if I could still make a bit of profit and I could very quickly see my profit dwindling. So 
I realized that I'm gonna have to build some stuff and quickly, lest I not just lose all of my money. So what I ended up building here is a looping coaster and it's always kind of difficult to you know, identify what these things are exactly because in the game they are kind of a cross between an arrow corkscrew and a swatch cop looper. Uh, but in this case, I decided to make the layout as if it were uh, uh, an arrow corkscrew coaster. So double loop, double corkscrew is what I wanted to get in here. And anything else in the layout is just going to be some curves and hills to get to different places. But it's just a very standard fair layout. Now you might already be thinking that, you know, what's going on with this? This scenario asks you to build uh, lower intensity rides. And to be completely honest, I think the scenario is being way too hard on saying that you need lower intensity rides because in Parkitect it's kind of difficult to build real high intensity rides because even most rides that in real life would be considered thrilling end up getting a medium intensity here in the game. Uh, which people in this park are still willing to ride. You really have to put a lot of effort into making a high intensity ride. Either that or make a ride that just, you know, has a, an unrealistic layout with way too many lateral Gs or positive or any other kind of G forces. Uh, but so long as you have an idea of what a coaster is realistically like and can build a smooth layout with a decent speed, you're probably going to get a medium intensity rating. So. I wasn't really too concerned with making this coaster too intense because I figured that the guests in the park were probably going to want to ride it. Um, really the goal here was to create an as high as possible excitement rating while keeping the intensity rating in the medium so people wouldn't skip it. Uh, and I ended up succeeding in that. I'm not exactly sure what the stats on these things are but uh, all of the coasters in this build have pretty much the stats that I was looking for with a medium excitement rating uh, or no, a medium intensity rating and a really high excitement rating. So I think that whole sort of lower intensity statistics uh, thing that was promised at the beginning of the scenario is just much less of a concern than I figured it would be beforehand, which to be fair is also the thing that I've generally read based on reviews and other people's experiences with this scenario. It's easier in a sense that you know the you don't really have to pay too much uh, attention to making your rides less intense uh, the real thing that makes this scenario so difficult is the fact that you don't have very easy rides to play with it's hard to attract people into the scenario um, or into the park i should say and just overall reaching the goals of this scenario <laughs> turn out to be a lot more difficult than i figured it would be but more about that later uh, so what I actually wanted to do with this ride, and the very reason that I built a steel coaster here in the first place, is the fact that Parkitect has dragon cars, which is a bit unusual. I'm not even entirely sure why these are in the game, because they're not something that you really see in real life. Also, the zero car in front of the train, uh, which has the dragon head on it, is absolutely huge. It's such a long boy that I'm not even sure if it could realistically traverse the track because there are some pretty tight turns and inversions on this layout. And the first car is just super long, so it doesn't look too flexible. But it's a super cool looking train. It's something in Park Tech that I've never ever used before because I've never really felt like it fits into the theme of what I'm building. But now that I've got an Asian build going, uh, the Japanese love their dragons, I decided it was finally time to bring out the dragon cars and just create a dragon type steel coaster. Uh, I always got confused which of the coaster types in this game had the dragon cars. For a while I thought it was the junior coaster or the powered coaster. But no, it turns out that it's really the steel coaster all along. So um, yeah, that's where we're going with this. And the station again is just this off-grid, half-grid kind of building made out of cubes. Using the same kind of roofs that I've been using throughout this build. Although at this point I had a small epiphany and ended up switching out the regular windows for one of the detail pieces from the adventure theme, which makes a really cool small wooden window. So. I'm kind of gonna miss that piece in any scenario where we don't have the adventure theme because it's super useful. Uh, the adventure theme in general is super cool. Uh, I also decided that at this point, even though the guests are not actually gonna use this because they can't really use anything that's not path, 
I wanted to add some stepping stones on the lake because that's just something that you often find in Japanese gardens. Realistically, you know, you would see very flat, large rocks as stepping stones as opposed to these perfectly round things, although you do see that as well sometimes. Um, but given the restrictions of this game, I tried using some flat, ro uh, flat rocks at some point, but it just doesn't look as good as just using a few grey cylinders and making it look like some round rock work pieces. And yeah, other than that, I'm just creating a small pond at the back of the station for the queue line to go around. It's a pretty simple queue line, but I still like decorating my queue lines a bit as if it were a real life theme park, even though in Park Tact you don't really need long queue lines like that because probably you're not gonna have that many people queuing up anyway. Plus this coaster again does have a block break section at the end, which means I can use two trains. So we've got some two train ops going, so it's probably not going to have to struggle when it comes to capacity, but it's still something that I want to consider. Moving on from that, I decided to do a bit of custom scenery here, uh, make some custom supports out of pipe pieces for the loops, and as you might notice, I made the inversions on this coaster yellow. I don't really have a particular reason for it other than it just kind of looks cool and you can recolor track pieces and I thought the coaster looked a bit boring being entirely purple. Uh, I thought it blended a bit too much into the environments and giving inversions a different color is just... I think that's a, that's a leftover from Roller Coaster Tycoon, it has to be. It's not something that you really see in real life but it's something that I really like doing um, because I think I just did it a lot in Roller Coaster Tycoon. Uh, but yeah, it just works out pretty well, I think. I can't really add too much to the supports of the loop, so they are just going to be vertical, you know, black beams. Uh, that's going to be it. Uh, there are some other pipe pieces in the game, but then none of them are really shaped like actual coaster supports. But honestly, this is better than nothing, so I decided to just add this, uh, which unfortunately, in the game, if you don't custom support them, loops are unsupported. So it's also something that I always try to custom support whenever it comes up, because otherwise it just ends up looking a bit unrealistic. Now at this point I wasn't really confident that I was going to reach the guest goals of the scenario, so even though I'm honestly really happy with what the park looks like at this point, the things that I'm building from now on are just going to be to reach the goals. So first off, I wanted to build a jumper flat ride, because this thing should hopefully just bring in the guests. I figured it would be cool to have the queue line go around it with uh, a small Asian roof structure on top of it and have it sort of look toward the section where you have the wooden coaster interacting with the two corkscrews of the looping coaster. And in addition to that, just adding some general scenery to this area to make it look a bit fancier. Uh, also, one small thing that I did is add a staff room in here because my staff was complaining about a lack of staff rooms at first, so I ended up putting one next to the entrance, but there was never supposed to be a staff room building there. I didn't really plan for it, I just had to put that there as an emergency. So I figured this would be a good place to put a staff room. Now, I'm gonna finish that in a second, but in the meantime, I want to move over to a different part of the park where I want to build, uh, what are these things called again? Uh, a wipeout, there we go. Um, just because, well, I always kept this space reserved for a flat ride, just in case I needed one at the end. Which, if you look down at my guest count at the bottom left, you can tell that I'm getting close to 500, but I'm not quite there. And after running the game for a while, and even trying to massively campaign my park, I still wasn't getting there, so I figured, alright. I'm gonna have to break open this space that I kept reserved for another flat ride. I was honestly fine keeping this place empty as well because it was like a nice relaxing garden parts of the park, uh, but I'm really gonna have to add this thing in here. Uh, that said, I'm not gonna put a roof on top of this thing because I think it doesn't really work too well. Just a little bit of scenery on top of uh, the, uh, the entrance and just in general around this build. So if we skip forward a little bit, you can see basically what it looks like at the end. I did have a small building on the side of it as well, but ended up removing that just because uh, I thought it wasn't really looking too good there. And the final thing that I'm adding, at least I think this is my very last thing, is a food court next to the jumper. 
because I still wasn't getting to my guest goal after running the game for a bit, uh, my ratings never really went above 60%, which is quite bad. And after checking the, the guests and what they thought of the park, I figured that it had to do with the fact that they couldn't get enough food and drinks and also toilets. So I did sneak a toilet in somewhere. Uh, actually, that's in the station building of the steel coaster. Um, but yeah, I'm basically adding this building to fulfill their needs and hopefully make them happy enough to keep coming to the park. Um, because otherwise, without, you know, these kind of facilities, people are very quickly leaving the park. So regardless of my very heavy advertising, you know, I had a, I had a pretty decent influx, but also people kept leaving. So hopefully this is going to keep them in and I can finish the scenario. So let's see how it's doing. Um, how should I put this? This isn't what it looks like. <laughs> no, actually, this is exactly what it looks like. I wasn't able to get to 500 people consistently for two months for a long time. So after a lot of thinking about my myself, about my life, counting my life choices, recounting the things that I've done wrong in my life, the, the sins that I've committed, everything that will stack up once I'm at the gates of hell or heaven, wherever I end up. Um, looking at all of this evidence, I figured, okay, there's, there's one, one more thing probably won't hurt. Uh, I'll just remove this path in front of the entrance because I'm really not going to make this scenario if I don't do this. So yeah, this is, uh, this is what it took. I feel like I've gone back to Roller Coaster Tycoon at this point because it's such an old Roller Coaster Tycoon strategy, but... I, uh, hitting 500 people in the park wasn't too difficult, but keeping them in for two months was just nearly impossible because every single time I would lose it just before the end of the two months. So I'm sorry, I'm, I'm returning to my roller coaster tycoon days. To be fair, there was actually a time where I put a sign in front of this with no entry for guests. Which is the Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 strategy or Roller Coaster Tycoon strategy in general. Um, but it didn't work, which was kind of funny. So I think that the devs came up with a way to counter this, which is very smart. I'll give them that. But I'm smarter, so I just ended up removing the path in front of the entrance. It's horrible. I feel bad about it. It's, it's a terrible thing. It kind of feels like I cheesed my way through the scenario. But... I have to be completely honest, the way that I built this park, um, I just filled in every space that I wanted to fill in and I'm very scenery focused. So the only other way that I could finish the scenario was to shoehorn in a flat ride somewhere. But for my personal feelings, it would kind of ruin the flow of the park that I have right now. So I just ended up going to this. Now let's just end this video on a more positive note and uh, do some POVs of some of the coasters. So here's the junior coaster. It's actually quite popular. I've never seen a full train on this thing before, but judging by the queue, it's very crowded here. Um, this thing only runs one train because it is a kiddie coaster at the end of the day, but I might have also added some block breaks at the end there because it really could use two trains looking at this. But yeah, you know what these things are like. It's a very standard layout. Just some hills and curves, kind of following the terrain a little bit. Uh, but I think it works out quite well in this context. Now moving on, of course, we have the waterfront here with the swinging, the, the chair swing. And also this stone fence, which I think just works out so well. I'm kind of kicking myself for not using this more because I think it would work really well in a Japanese garden setting. But even just for this small waterfront, I think it's a nice touch. And then, of course, we have the wooden coaster here. I never actually name my coasters, which I kind of feel like I should do. But really, all I care about is decoration and scenery in this kind of game. Um, and even when I come up with names, they tend to be sort of generic ones that I just come up with in the, in the moment. So... It's not something that I pay too much attention to. I really just want to focus on the scenery in general. So it's a straight drop, which is kind of unusual for a GCI, but after that we get into some more standard GCI fare. Some overbank turns, little air time pops, although I also have to say that the pops aren't quite as snappy as they would be in real life, just because of the way that Parkitect works. Um, but overall I tried to make this layout feel like, ooh, 
<laughs> cool interaction right there. I tried to make the layout feel like it has a, a GCI-like shape to it, including, of course, the station flyby over here. And also, there is a double down over there. And finally, we're finishing this layout with a quick dip here. Uh, I actually really like this curve. This is kind of GCI-esque, and it's something that you can quite easily do in Parkitect. All you really have to do is you're at a straight section and you're banked. And what I like to do is then just make another straight piece, then a tiny curve, and then go flat. So that you have a flat section here and then a flat section here. And you can just have auto connect, connect a curve between that. So you have one curve that starts curving down and then flattens out again. Which is a really cool effect and you can use it in a pinch. And also just for the way that it looks because it just gives so many more options to when it comes to uh, making layouts in this game. And then of course there is the coaster that I did give a name, uh, Tatsumaki, just because it's dragon in Japanese. Um, I, I mean the dragon cars are kind of a meme with their big zero car, but I think it fits into the park quite well, especially with these kind of highlighted uh, inversions here. And of course we have some cool interaction with the path, a flyby going over the station here, and then in the back half of this ride, flying through these corkscrews, and with a quick turnaround we get back into the brake run. Very simple layout, but I think given the context of the park it works out quite well, and I'm actually quite happy with uh, how this station turned out. Even if at this point these buildings are starting to look like each other <laughs> quite a bit, um, this is definitely one of my favorite buildings in this scenario, and I think it works out just right in this location. And yeah, I guess that is pretty much it for the major rides in this park. Uh, of course, I have a few flat rides here and there, and an extra food court, also a staff room in this little building. Um, and, and then there's just a building which is completely decoration. For Actually, what I should do is open this up to the public because I had this closed for a while because people were going here and becoming tired and then leaving the park, which was quite a hindrance to me trying to get 500 guests into the park. Uh, but now that I reached the goal, I feel pretty safe removing that as well. Um, it was just a bit annoying sometimes having lots of people walk around here, get tired, not really ride anything, and then want to go home. Um, I think in this game it's really detrimental if you have a very spread out layout of a park and there are large areas without any rides, which in this scenario is kind of hard to avoid because you start off with a fairly large map with a lot of path work and I sort of started building all over the map right from the get-go, but it's something to keep in mind anyway. Alright, now that's pretty much it for Sakura Gardens. I'm just gonna save this thing one last time. And <laughs> what's actually kind of funny is if you scroll through this, you see all of the tries that I had to save. Uh, and this is, this is what it took to finally get to my finished Sakura Gardens. Also, a uh, fun little note, you might have seen Silica Slopes for a second there. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much, but I recorded this episode and Silica Slopes out of chronological order. So Silica Slopes is going to follow this video, but I did record it already. It's a bit of a strange, confusing situation. It's just because Silica Slopes is on my laptop and I worked on this on my computer at the same time. But it's Steam synced, so I do have both of these files. Um, anyway, let's let's go back to the main camp uh, campaign menu and see which scenario I got. Because to be honest, I actually have no idea. All right, so we got the station, uh, no wait, the deliveries building, which <laughs> compared to some of the buildings which I've made in this scenario is uh, lacking some detail, I guess. And the new scenario is going to be disaster peaks, oh Lord. Okay, that's gonna be a fun one. I'm looking forward to trying that. It's honestly a very interesting scenario, but next video will be about silica slopes. And I can already tell you this is going to be a really interesting video. I, can, I think I came up with some cool layouts for the coasters primarily, but you guys are going to see that next time. Until then, see you.